Hey everyone, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to add digital garments um, or garment templates to your embroidery files on the Pace Setter BES4 Dream Edition software. Um, so I've already opened this and I've already just created a blank slate here. I'm going to go up and select Add Design. Let's just do something simple and it went way up there. If you have this little plus sign, don't just click anywhere. You have to go up here and do select and you drag this down. Um, and you can actually resize it if you need to. Um, but if you don't know how exactly how big this is or if this will fit your hoop, you can go up here to hoop, select hoop, and it'll show you this is already set to fit mine. I usually either do this one or this one. Um, and since this one is more rectangle, I'll do I'll do that setting. <clears throat> but you can do whichever one is best for you. So now you can actually see the hoop. And if you want it to fit the entire thing, you can go down here and say fit hoop, and it will let you know that you know if it doesn't fit correctly or not. With this one, it won't fit correctly because it's satin. Um, or the satin pattern for the stitches. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And we can come over here and we'll just change the pattern. Let's do random. Maybe that'll help it. Yeah. OK, so now if you want this to go away, just click on the hoop and it'll go away. So to, to select your garment templates, Come over here, or up there rather, and you can select from many, many different kinds. I usually do the baby rompers because I like to create um, embroidery patterns for little babies and their shirts and rompers and stuff. But I mean, you could do any, you could do like a basic square, or you could do men's polo shirt on the back. Um, for this one, Let's do a children's t-shirt on the front. You can select the fabric, which I usually don't do because some of these fabrics are ugly. I mean, anybody's going to have a shirt that's like checkered brown. Maybe the polka dots, but not the brown that looks like a weave basket. <laughs> that's funny. So we'll just not do that. We'll select none. We'll do OK. And that will usually turn it white. If you don't select none, it'll just stay the basic um, color that it came with, this color right over here. Um, and then you can do the object size, the width, and the height. I usually don't mess with these um, because I can do that here in just a minute instead of actually typing it in. You can type it in if you know the exact measure measurements that you need. Um, but you might want to always do this little checkbox for maintain aspect ratio because that will keep the shirt in its um, in its form. So instead of squishing it down to make it look shorter or you know what have you, it'll stay um, looking like it's supposed to. So there we'll just select OK. And we can, since this was the right size that we need, I'll just let that be. Uh, we can come down here, or actually it's up here to this and make that smaller. Uh-oh, wrong one. We'll leave that the same size, but we're going to get the shirt. We'll pull it down here just so I don't mess with the size of that again. And we're going to make the shirt bigger. And really, the only um, purpose for this I have found is if you have an online shop, um, I have an online shop where I do, like I said, you know, the designs for the baby clothes, baby rompers, whatnot, I can um, take a picture of this entire thing and show people, you know, this design is supposed to go on a shirt or on um, whatever it is you want it to go on, a polo, baby shirt, just whatever. Uh, so that's usually what I use that for. And I'll just make it just a little bigger, even though I'm not messing with the actual design itself. And I'll show you how I take pictures of it. Uh, let's see. 
Well, that's a bit too small. Okay, so now I have Windows 10, um, and I don't know if this is just a Windows 10 thing the way I do this. I think it is because I wasn't able to do it this way before I had Windows 10. So now that you have that, you come down here. I just type it in because I don't want to go through searching and finding all the folders and stuff like that. I type in snip and it will come up snipping tool. Click on that. And I just move this up over here. You could take a picture of the entire thing. I usually don't need that. Um, I just need the picture of the actual shirt itself. So I'll do new. And you've got your little cross right there. And so you drag it. And I use, see these little cursors right, or the, um, the marks up here at that negative 190? Um, I usually use those. This is not really even in, in the middle, uh, so I can't really base that off of that, or else it would be over here and that's not even. So I'll go out a little further. Um, just to make sure I get the perfect square. You don't have to do that, but I like to do that. And then you let go of your mouse and you can save it. So I'm going to save that and it's just going to be on my desktop and I'll just say sample. Um, and you want it to say PNG. Uh, if you need it, a JPEG, you could do a JPEG. I have always just been fine with using the PNG, but I know some places don't like uploading PNGs. Um, so you just do whatever's, whatever works for you, and then you save it. And with this, you can also, you know, just write whatever, which I never do, um, but you can if you wanted to. Of course, you don't want to save that one. Um, so that's pretty much it on how to do the garment templates. And if you... Uh, are going to embroider it and you need to take this off you just click on it you can press your delete button or you can come up here and select delete and there you have it um, I hope this video was very helpful um,